Welcome. Welcome and thank you for joining us for Alt Dev Student Summit. We are pleased to present Eric Johnson. Uh, note that you may submit questions using the Google Moderator link posted on the live site. Uh, we'll address these questions during the Q&A at the end. Uh, also feel free to join the discussion on Twitter using the Alt Dev Conf hash hashtag. Uh, without further interruption, I would like to turn it over to Eric. Hi guys, this is uh, a day in the life of an indie PR and marketing guy. As mentioned, I'm Eric Johnson. I work for Arkham Games. Uh, we're a virtual team of six. Um, we have three of us in North Carolina, two in Georgia, and myself in California. We're composed of two programmers, a level designer, a composer, a community manager, and myself. Um, we're actively developing three games at the moment. Our 2009 space strategy title, AI War, we, which we just released a fourth expansion for. Uh, Shattered Haven, which is an, an upcoming top-down survival game planned for early next year. And A Valley Without Wind 2, which is going to be the sequel to our experimental, experimental Metroidvania release that launched earlier this year. So, the day in question. Uh, to me, it never should be a standard day of do this, this, and this. There's a lot more sort of um, give and take and read, and read and react to it. You have to be able to improv a little bit as a PR marketing guy, take advantages, take opportunities uh, when they're given. Um, so you kind of you know keep your eyes out for those kind of things. But there are daily checkpoints. You select, select certain items and tasks you're trying to keep up with on an everyday basis, and you try to stay consistent with them. Um, but, you know, some days you release a game. That day you'll be doing completely different stuff than what you'll be doing on, an, on any other day when you're just at home on your computer or at work on, at your office on your computer. And then some other days you're on the road, you're attending events, that's also different. So there's no actual, you know, every single day of this, this, and this. But this is kind of the standard day when you're not doing releases and not on the road, but we'll touch that a little bit later as well. Um, so first up, I usually kick it off with research. Um, there's a lot to different styles and types of research that I talk about here. Um, but starting out, I show a picture of, of the RSS feed because that's kind of where I kick my day off. I usually get up and go over about 300 to 400 articles on my RSS feed, which I've kind of compiled over years through different um, games jobs. One was uh, starting out as a games blogger in a big marketing firm, and then I moved into uh, indie games journalism, and then finally got into development. Um, so I kind of have um, a, like a good collection from all that, all those different um, corners of the industry. It kind of um, helps me see what else is what else is going on in the industry beyond just our company, uh, what, who's working on what, how they're going about publicizing it, and then in general, just for myself, it helps me keep up with the industry as a whole as well, which I think is a really good thing to do. Um, you know, whatever industry you're in, but especially if you're in PR marketing, you're trying to keep um, up with trends, up with with the beat of things. Excuse me. Uh, okay. Um, also, website analytics this is a good thing to research. Where's your traffic coming from? Um, if you're selling a ga game uh, on your site, you know where the sales are, are coming from. A lot of times, uh, good things to keep an eye on. Um, both when I'm saying where they come from, I mean both. You can track. Usually, you can track country. You can track um, the websites that are pushing them through to your site. Things like that, so you know kind of where what's succeeding, what's failing when you're marketing, when you're trying to get the games out to certain places and certain people. Um, play your games, play other people's games too um, during your research period, but you have to be careful not to let it mess up your schedule. It's, there's definitely a difference between playing games for research and playing them a bit in Nexus for, for fun. Most of us in the games industry play games uh, that I know, and uh, we, like, you know, we like playing games a long time just like anybody else, but you have to know the difference between researching uh, certain things in games and just having a good time, and those are, you know, there's a time for both. Uh, research is also a good time to spend coming up with pitches for your game and other marketing plans. Uh, working how best to explain your game in 15 seconds, for instance, is something that uh, every good developer should have, I think, in their back pocket. Because um, when you have face-to-faces with people, they are going to probably stick with you for about that long. And if it doesn't interest them, they're kind of going to check out or move on. Um, and also, you know, you can flesh out an idea to get your game or your team some press coverage during during the research period as well. You can kind of run with ideas, uh, have fun with them, make sure they're reasonable, of course, but creativity counts when trying to uh, garner some attention. So keep that in mind. Those are all things um, throughout this, this research uh, phase I'm talking about during your day that you can check out. Um, next is scheduling, which uh, kind of should be ongoing, uh, touching base with the rest of your team. Um, or if it's just you as an individual, you should, you should schedule for self-motivation purposes. Um, but with the team, you have the ad added situation of communication as well. Um, 
communication that should be kept up every day or so. Uh, sometimes it slips, but with really hardworking programmers and designers and composers, it's it's going to happen. People are going to just get really into their individual uh, tasks, and sometimes just um, communication will start to break down a little bit. So I feel that's my kind of job to to keep just play the play the glue guy sometimes, keep communication going. Um, it's not even necessarily to schedule all the time, but rather just to chat, talk about what's going on in our lives. Um, that's also crucial, I think. Um, scheduling doesn't have to always be scheduling. You you know you have to welcome tangents to a reasonable extent if you're if you're a team, especially a virtual team, because a lot of times you don't know each other that well, and it's good to get to know each other. Um, I just shouldn't have to explain why that would make your team uh, better in that in that sense. So definitely something to think about. And then uh, next, engaging with industry. Uh, I have Twitter up there because that's uh, how a lot of developers engage uh, with each other. Um, developer forums as well, tick source, uh, net networks such as um, the subreddit um, on Reddit game dev, uh, our, our game dev, is a good, uh, those are good public places basically to to chat with their developers, um, see what other people are talking about, see what's popular at the time. Um, it's, it's, you know, it has, it has some, some uh, similarities to, to your research portion of the industry itself um, during that time. But again, it's another thing where you have to watch your time. Um, I know a lot of people who are, you know, just, you know, really obsessed with Twitter, spending too much time on it. They're, they can even admit that. But uh, for me, I, I find it's best to just spend a, like a half hour, hour on Twitter, actually actively engaging in it and then just sort of turning it off uh, for a while and not just having it on, in a window open because that can be really distracting a lot of times from your actual regular work. Um, and Well, not your regular work, but your other work because it's still important regular work to do. Just don't do too much of it. Um, engaging with community, it can be on just a regular day. This can just be an hour of your time, um, but on like a really good day or a bad day, it can be your whole day. And that's just to say, if your your know, game's audience um, is generally going to seek you out the most when your game uh, has a big reveal, a big announcement, it comes out, or it can also be because players are running into a, an issue on a massive level. So. That, those are the times when I, when I mean really good day or bad day, you just have to drop everything and um, take on either the concerns, the complaints, the comments, whatever it is, uh, but you have to engage with the community at that point. Um, most days, though, it's pretty, it's much more relaxed than that. Um, in the image here are some of the, some of the different landings for Arkham Games uh, audience, our community. Um, we mark it to uh, our blog posts and our updates to uh, forums, Facebook pages, Twitter, subreddits, um, and so on. And that seems kind of, it's, it's, it is a little extra work um, for, on my end, but you have to think about why or uh, how gamers work, how your audience is going to work. Some people don't use forums. Some people prefer Facebook for everything. Some people prefer Reddit for everything. Um, so creating landings on those particular sites and those networks give your audience a chance to grow on their own because they don't have to actively seek out where you are at. You're giving them an opportunity to, jo to join um, and follow your news and all that from where they're at, which is kind of a, it just makes it easy for everybody. It's kind of a win-win situation. Um, so, you know, that along with just talking with people in general on your forums, keeping up, uh, not being, not keeping people at arm's length, but actually talking to them one-to-one -one and, uh, and understanding that you're talking to people and making sure that they understand that they're also talking to people. That's a huge thing with community that we promote hugely, uh, huge, huge, huge. Yes, that's all, but it's very big um, for, for us at Arkham Games to do that because we feel like we, we get um, a ton out of uh, a community that grows and is appreciative of the developer, um, not just the game. All right, moving on to uh, technical writing. Let me just get one drink here. Okay, all right. So um, on the left, you see uh, one of our press releases for AI War. Press releases are, are, are generally during announcement periods. They alert press about an important development for your game. Sometimes it may, if you're releasing in beta or uh, your actual official release is coming out, for example, that's when you would do a press release. You should send it to Games Press, which is a site where you can uh, submit your announcements to share with the press in general. And you should also send it to an email list, either individually or compiled. Uh, I found a better response from going the more personalized individual route for the most part when you send out emails, but you also need to understand that a lot of times a majority of journalists will pass on your announcement, and uh, there can be several reasons for that. None of them are personal, 
So don't get discouraged if no one covers your game the first time around. Um, you know, it's something you have to keep active at. But on the flip side, you have to also have a feel if you're ever bordering on bar on bothersome. Um, knowing when to shut up for a while is one of marketing's best weapons, and it's often completely disregarded. So you know, you need to know when to make a lot of noise, and you need to know when to be quiet. I think those are both really important things to keep in mind. Um, another thing to keep in mind for press contacts is to seek out people who may actually have an interest in your game. Knowing what your game is all about and who specifically out there plays that genre on the platform you're developing for, then you know you can build your contact list around that foundation. And it's one of those never-ending tasks that you, if you can keep up with, you'll earn yourself more consistent coverage. I basically I guarantee it. Uh, that's that's just a great way uh, to establish it. You have to be actively looking for those um, those those journalists out there who have an interest in what you're making um, or or something similar to anyway. Um, so on the right there is also a uh, the Shattered Haven uh, Game City article is just one of our standard uh, blog posts. We we put up website our, I write up the website articles updates um, and we'll, we'll put them on NDDB NDDB as well. Um, staying active on this of course helps you grow your audience and keeps them in tune with how development is going and uh, where and when they can play the game, which is things you want them to be aware of. So it's it's really important I think to keep up blogs and uh, share your updates out as well on those uh, social networks. Uh, getting into development work a little bit, and this is more kind of specifically me, like my PR marketing day. Some people probably don't do this, but this is, I'm with an indie studio and this is what I do. So I figured I'd, I'd tell you about it. Um, it's more writing, but this time I get to get a little creative. Uh, story development for certain games. I do quest writing for some of our games. Uh, level design. And of course, whatever I can help with, like compiling lists of suitable names for our procedurally generated games which is not the most enthralling task, but it has to be done. It makes the game better. So, uh, you know, whatever, whatever little thing needs to be done, I try to, uh, that doesn't involve programming, I try to do it. Um, trailers as well. Um, I was going to show the trailer, but I heard that the audio is just aren't, isn't working for it, so I figured let's just skip that for now. I can talk a little bit about trailers in general anyway. Um, you don't obviously have to be the editor. It's, it's, it's great if you can be, um, but what you have to be, I think, is the PR uh, marketing guy with with a, with a trailer, a video game trailer, is you have to kind of be the the middle, you know, be the glue between the developers and the designers of the game and the video editor to come up with a trailer that's both sort of informative and entertaining. They have to hit both marks. You have to have hooks. Um, you know, a trailer is an integral part of your press push, along with screenshots and other media and info information. So trying to hook people in the first 15, 30 seconds is something that's really important in trailers. Things, those, those kind of things are, are something that as the marketing PR guy, you have to make sure, okay, is this going to capture people? And is it telling them uh, first timers about the game? <clears throat> we just made a, like a, the trailer I'm talking about is an AI war uh, trailer for 6.0. So it's, I mean, the game has been around forever, but we still are trying to come up with a trailer that pitches the game to people who have never seen it before, never played it before. Um, and just can, can catch and understand what's going on in the first, um, first uh, half minute or so. I could spend a half an hour devoted actually talking about trailer work, but, but that's not what this talks about, so we'll move forward. Um, I seek out all this different work in the development stuff outside of the PR marketing, what would be what would generally fall into the PR marketing stuff, um, because, because I kind of want to become a jack of all trades for my company. It's a good thing, I think, to attempt to go at and beyond that level, the jack of all trades level with the crafts you love and or the jobs that make you the most valuable to your team. It's also personally enriching, it's something I want to grow into more as I learn more about and gain experience. It just makes me feel fuller as a person and a more active member of the team. So I just feel more confident talking about my games um, as a PR marketing guy when I'm actively involved with them. It's just, it just kind of goes hand, hand in hand. So it made sense that I would do that um, if, when, when, if and when I have the opportunity to do so. Okay, supporting the industry. Um, this is kind of extracurricular activity at, at work. Um, it can often bite into your personal time, but I still think it's really important to do. Um, as someone who wants to be part of the games industry for as long as possible, I feel it's an act of self-preservation to promote the community as a whole any way I can. Um, so just a couple of things I put up there on the left is um, my indie game magazine. Uh, one of my one of my, my two features I do there, which is uh, just a collection of links, um, developer links and uh, indie game links, 
which is basically a collection of um, updates from different blogs that lets people know what's going on with throughout the industry. You know, different any developers such as um, Young Horses who, who are doing Octodad, and uh, and uh, it just lets me kind of it's not really giving back or anything, but it but it promotes. Uh, the developers uh, to the indie game magazine audience. The indie game magazine audience now gets to keep up with all these different developers. So there's like a share and support system going on there. That's kind of cool. And I like doing that. Um, and then my YouTube channel as well, um, which is, which is, hasn't really taken off the way I wanted it to yet because I really haven't had any time to put into, but we're still making the videos and I'm really happy with how they're turning out. There's just lots of different, um, we go to different events like PAX and Indiecade and uh, myself and my my friend who helps me make the trailers uh, for my, my games actually is, is you know we take our camera out and we um, do interviews with developers and uh, get footage of their games and throw videos together uh, for that. So that's just something extra I like to do um, when I have the opportunity to, um, just because you know I want the industry to thrive, I want it to go well, so I want to you know pitch back in my little my little share if I can. Uh, attending events. So this is kind of getting outside the daily. The standard day of, of being at home, you know, eighty percent, ninety percent of the time. But I think it's really super, super important to talk about. Um, if you can create a budget for it, do it. Uh, you can further support your industry and yourself personally uh, as a developer if you take some time each year to attend different events. I myself make it a goal to be out of my house, attending or traveling around to different events six weeks a year, which can seem like a really long time, and it is. Uh, I just last this last Monday, I just got back from a two-week trip to the UK. Where uh, I showed uh, Shattered Haven at Game City, we did. A, I did a talk with Paul Taylor of uh, Mode Seven Games, the guys who made Frozen Synapse. And uh, then from that point in, in Nottingham, we went over to Bath for uh, several days to do uh, to uh, attend a, uh, this um, development conference called X Play, which was really fun. And uh, I was there for two weeks. And it was the first two weeks I'd really ever been away uh, from my wife and daughter um, as, as a complete family before, you know, uh, she's only two and a half. So this was my first time taking two weeks away from, from, from them. And uh, yeah, I definitely got homesick in the middle of it. It was, it was tough. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles, so it was, it was raining the whole time. It was cold. My blood is thin. Um, and I just was thinking, man, this, you know, this is so, this is so, I, I oh, this is so, uh, rough to be out here on the road all the time and but then you get back and then you remember all the great experiences you had and uh, you know I wouldn't trade it for the world you know these are great spaces uh, these 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 events um, even in within your own country or outside of it those are great great places to affirm what you're doing professionally by talking to your peers uh, and, and or your audience face to face um, to find like-minded people out there. It's really an amazing thing, uh, especially if you're in a job that has you sort of alone behind a computer 90% of the time. That's something that you just have to find time for. Um, you'll just find yourself working with a smile on your face more if you do. Um, conventions, industry gatherings, large and small, keep an eye out for them in general. Plan a budget for them by yourself or with your team if you can afford it. If you can't, enter your game into festivals and contests. Um, you know, if, if you do have the funds exhibit, just, you know, get in contact with their coordinator and exhibit. Um, when you feel confident enough, take opportunities to speak and share your experiences and lesson, lessons learned. You know, go speak. It's a, it's, a, it's a really enriching thing to do as well. Uh, yeah, you'll gain valuable contacts and grow your name as an active member of the community, but you'll also find the motivation and passion for your everyday work. It really sustains itself when you participate in events like such as this one. So just don't miss opportunities with these. That's that's would be like my bottom line with attending events is don't pass them up if you get a chance to go to them. And then kind of going full, full, full circle, uh, remember to take breaks and vacations. I bring back the amazing walk clock JPEG from earlier to help remind not to let time become a prison. When you're passionate about your projects, you're inclined to make personal sacrifices for them. First with your life, outside your work, um, which I encourage everyone to invest in and value highly. Uh, and then also your physical and mental health can come next if you're not careful. And so avoiding burnout is, is, is something that I think any, not just the PR marketing, but anything in, in with passionate work has to be talked about. Um, burnout was an issue for me in 2011. And it nearly ruined me in a couple of ways, taking time for myself to exercise, uh, relax, uh, getting the six, seven, eight hours of sleep I, I need a night. I found myself uh, miles more efficient and a lot more consistent as well. Um, there's still going to be times I know where there's going to be, you know, 16-hour, 20-hour days where I just want to push myself through and stuff. But I'm 
I, I actively now make that, try to make that the exception, not the norm. So that's, that's, that's some advice there. Um, take breaks all the time because you have to, not because you want to. Um, it clears your head out. It, it just, it just helps you maintain a focus that you otherwise wouldn't have if you just kind of, you just kind of keep pushing through, um, eat food. <laughs> Remember that burnout causes inconsistency, which is one of the major themes to avoid in PR and marketing as a whole. Uh, that's, that's not the point is to be inconsistent. And I know, and I definitely know by experience when you work all the time, your brain's going to say, okay, stop at some point and, and, and just not make not let you do anything or worse comes to worse. You're going to push through and you're not even going to realize you're burning yourself out. And then it can be even a worse situation down the road. So, um, so there's a little PSA safety at the end, but I thought it was it, through my own experience it's definitely worth mentioning because you want to, you want to attack your job with such vigor sometimes that you forget that, you know, we're only human and you have to, you know, keep a certain consistency with yourself as well. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it for me. Thanks uh, to the alt dev folks for having me again. Um, thanks for everyone who's listening. If, uh, I'm, looks like we have 10 minutes left for, for questions. So I'll turn it back over to Heather um, for any questions that we have. Thank you, Eric. Uh, the first question we have here is, how do you seed an empty forum so people feel the game is more popular? Um, I guess that's uh, the best way to seed it is, is to be consistent um, without an audience first. I know that sounds really stupid, but you're not trying to you're not trying to recruit people for nothing, right? You're trying to um, actively show them that there's something worthwhile there. So uh, I find I find the best thing that you can have here. I'll turn off the screen share so we can just there we are. Hi. Um, the best the best way to um, kind of attack that is just uh, just work hard and keep keep consistent. People will start catch and and keep promoting yourself. Uh, you know where you can, um, and people will latch on. And those people will, if they really think that you're doing a consistent job or they, do, they think you're doing something really creative or amazing, they're going to want to tell other people. So that's where you get kind of that audience to grow is by other audience members talking about. We call them, it sounds, it sounds like a bad word, but we call them evangelists. Like they take, they take, they're not working for you, but they're willing to go out and make this huge effort for you that is just means so much more than you going out going, Oh yes, my game's really great. Well, yeah, of course, it's your game. Like, but if someone else says that, that's so much more meaningful. So it, those are the things to keep in mind. Don't worry about your audience's size. Just keep after it, and it will grow. All right. Uh, next question we have is: How important is it to get people from your community to promote your game, and uh, what do you do to support that effort? Um, so I kind of covered that in the last question, but I'll, I'll definitely add to it. It's massively important, um, and it's just not something that you get from a couple of days or a really good like blog post, you know, or a couple of days of work or whatever, uh, you have to, it's something that you just, again, it's consistency, uh, usually over years of time, um, to sort of garner that, that following and also garner a following that is, that's, that really staunchly believes in what you're doing, um, to have people actually have the want and the need to go out and tell um, other forms, other people about your game is an incredibly uh, special thing that uh, you cannot take for granted. And at the same time, it's something that you really have to strive for. So um, there's lots of different ways to do it. But the number one, the bottom line is just be consistent and make sure that you have a good product um, because those are the two sort of stepping stones you're going to need to go anywhere to the next level as far as garnering an audience. The, the rest will fall into place, you'll find. And our next question is, how do you figure out which events are worth attending? Uh, how do you track the value of your attendance? That's, that's a really good question. Um, at first, you kind of don't unless you go out and, and, and either see, them, see the events yourself or seek advice from other people who have attended events. Um, that's basically how I've gone about it. But certain events like um, Penny Arcade Expo, I've always just been drawn to anyway. It's huge. It's a huge indie development supporter. Um, and it's, and it brings in, you know, I think anywhere between 60 and 80,000 people every, every time they do it, which is now two or three times a year, it seems like. Um, so those are events that are just like check completely worthwhile. If I can get to the Seattle area or I can get to the Boston area in the United States. And now they have one in Australia and such. Um, if you can get to those places, you know, go do those events, even if you're just attending. Um, but if you exhibit, that's a whole, whole new 
game as well. Now, what you're talking about exhibiting, as far as getting retention, people coming by, uh, PAX is a great thing to talk about as well because uh, even if you have, I think we did the math, even if you have, uh, we did PAX East with four um, computer setups, and even if we had every single person in the seats playing the game uh, for the entire time the exhibiting floor was on, every 15 minutes switching out, which was like an, barely enough time to even give them a chance to demo the game, that would be under or at 500 people. So 500 people out of 75,000 people may play the game at PAX, which is like, whoa, that's that's such a low percentage. It's, it's just mind boggling. So signage is really important. Uh, getting a video, maybe a, 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 a screen up high enough to show off your trailer, um, buttons, uh, stickers. Um, people like buttons more than they like stickers, to be honest. Um, but any kind of, you know, easily attained swag is always a good thing as well. Um, you're trying to get people at the bigger events when you're exhibiting to uh, just notice you for a split second before they forget you because there's so much going on at PAX. But there's definitely different methods for smaller events and such as well. All right, and uh, when you have a complex game, like one with uh, subtle design interactions, how do you make sure people are aware of the complexity without making it intimid without making it intimidating? That's a really good question, and that's one I, I'm definitely able to field because AI War and, and, and Valley Without Wind are very, have a ton of complexity to them. Uh, I often complain a lot to my programmers because a lot of times what I'll be pitching is a really cool part about the game may not even be in the game in three months if we do if we if we start uh, marketing earlier on in development and such. So that's always something uh, to keep in mind. Complexity, uh, difficulty, that kind of stuff. Um, it's not something that you want to actively market uh, unless you want to get a bunch of people who want to play a really hard game. I guess it just depends on your audience, really. Um, for AI War, like I said, we were trying to come up with a trailer that it's a it takes the AI War the game takes three hours to even get through the tutorial for the most part. It's a very uh, steep curve that once you get over, you're, you're into the clear, and everybody who gets over that, cur that, that curve gen tends to love the game. Um, so it's my job to get them in the door and then let them see if they want to challenge themselves with, with, uh, with how hard it is to get into the game. But it's not something like we actively share. Um, you don't want to blindside people, but if they see a space RTS in the trailer, that indicates it's very large scale. I would imagine they think there's going to be a little bit of time they're going to have to put in before they just pick it up and, and, and get it uh, get it right. Um, that said, simplifying design uh, and, and and making it simple for the players to understand, um, keeping complexities but keeping simplicities within those complexities, which I know sounds oxymoronic, but it's not. Um, finding the simple things in your complex design to talk about, and also the things that really are going to mean anything to the players and get them excited. Those are the things you want to focus on. OK, and uh, one last question here. Um, how significant are Facebook likes, for instance? Do you feel that it gives a realistic picture about how popular a game might really be? Um, probably, but I don't care at all. Um, it's, it's something that um, Facebook is just one of our many uh, networks that we drop in on and so it's it, if I had I guess more time I probably invest in figuring that out but since I have lots of different things throughout the day I'm trying to get done uh, my my big thing is just to uh, make sure that it gets to the to the group that it is if, if it's the AI war group or the Valley that win group um, and that can that number continues to grow so it's the likes I think you're talking about the likes and, and the, the groups is what you mean um, it can indicate definitely how popular it is uh, AI war I think has like 700 about that one has 400 um, and our our game that uh, I didn't mention tide Alice which hasn't which we haven't kept developing, which didn't uh, garner that much of an audience, just hit 100 very recently and stuff. So um, it sure does indicate, I guess, a little bit about how popular it is. But um, that's not something, I mean, exactly. It's not something that I, I worry about or care about. But yeah, I think, I think you know, if you have thousands of likes for your game page, then you probably have a, have a pretty good following going at that point. Um, and you should, at some point, release your game. All right, well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have, but I want to thank you, Eric, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, we have some more sessions coming up, and then the panel will be con uh, 
breaking in panel be concluding our day. Uh, check out the Watch Live page for the latest videos. And thank you all again. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot, guys.